This is Transformation Church, 11032 South Indiana, where Pastor Andrew D. Hunt Jr. is our leader. Look, don't touch that dial. Can TV channel 36. You can you stream me. You can YouTube me, Reverend Sean D. Coleman. Don't touch that dial. Can TV. Enjoy the program already in progress. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>
where you found it, won't you stand for the reading of God's word, Romans 5, 3, and 4. And as is our custom, won't you hold your Bibles high and repeat after me. This is, this is the Word of God. Word of God. It, has it has transformative power. Transformative power. I, will I will praise God for this preaching moment. This preaching moment. And I declare, I declare that after this moment, after this moment that I should never, I should never ever yeah. be the same before we go into the scripture, before I get so happy it slips in my mind, um, let us put our Bibles to the side and put our hands together for the Pastor's Anniversary Committee, uh, led by the ushers, led by Sister Marcella Smith-Taylor. Thank you so much. You all have set a gold standard, gold standard in the church uh, for leadership. Thank you, thank you, and thank you. In Romans 5, verses three and four, these words are faithfully recorded. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word for the education of our hearts and our souls. Amen. Amen. You may be seen. Pay close attention to both verses, but particularly verse 5. And hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. Really that first part of that, first, that fifth verse. And hope does not disappoint us. I want to talk today for a few moments from the subject, and I really want to help you draw the difference. The difference between wishing and hoping. There's a difference. The difference between wishing and hoping, and hope does not disappoint us. Let us bow our heads for a word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the celebration that you have given us from the second Sunday in September on to now. We thank you for keeping us, God. Keeping us at our best, keeping us at our worst. Keeping us in abundance, and keeping us in the slip time. Showing us that you are God all by yourself. And so God, we ask that you move amongst the hearts and minds of your people now. That we may be transformed by the renewing of our minds. Lord, let the words of my mouth not be of my own opinion nor my understanding. Lord, Lord, may they fall fresh from you. And someone may be transformed by the renewing of their mind. This indeed is our prayer. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. The difference between wishing and hoping. In this place, even now, and on Wednesdays, on other Sundays, most weeks, most of us have a prayer request. Most of us have things in our lives that we need worked out. 
fact, I would venture to say that if you're here today and have nothing in your life to work out, uh, then you have an antidote to make millions. <laughs> because there's not a person under the sun uh, that does not have something in life that they need to work out. Or maybe you're not even in a position to make millions. If you don't have anything to work out, and your work is done, then we'll be glad to call Taylor or A.R. Lee Funeral Home uh, that they may come get you because clearly you have conquered all the troubles of this world. But we pray. Uh, we pray that we can get well. Uh, we pray uh, that we can grow in our careers. We pray that our, our children can grow in safe neighborhoods and that they can grow and be productive individuals. We pray um, for our loved ones that may be sick. We pray uh, for organizations that we have given our lives to. We pray that the Lord in his own majestic way works things out. We come, we join hands fervently and sometimes we ask that it be mentioned particularly and specifically within the prayer that God may hear us. The tragedy though and the thing that we've got to be careful with about our prayer requests if we're not careful of that soon when it seems like our prayer is not getting through. Anybody ever felt like that? Seemingly when it seems like we have prayed and prayed and nothing has seemingly changed. If we are not careful, we'll find ourselves discouraged. Uh, we will find ourselves giving up on the very thing that we've asked God for. In fact, some of us won't give up, but some of us and some Christians end up living bitter lives. Uh, bitter, locked jaw lives because they are frustrated with God. That although the song says he would hear their faded cry and answer by and by, it seems like God has put our phone on mute. And it's not hearing what we have to say. One of the reasons I submit today as I, I've asked this question as a pastor, I've asked, what do I tell somebody or how do I help somebody more over if they're getting a prayer, they're praying and the prayer seemingly isn't getting through. And as I ask God for direction, not only in your prayer life, but in my prayer life, I find that our frustration rests in our inability to tell the difference between wishing and hoping. We're frustrated because we are confused with what ought to be the bedrock of our prayer. And so I consulted Webster's Dictionary to see, in fact, what the difference between wishing and hoping would be. Webster says that wishing is to desire something that is otherwise unattainable and difficult to obtain. That's wishing. Uh, to desire something that is otherwise difficult to obtain. But hope is a little bit different. Hope is to cherish a desire with expectation of fulfillment. To cherish a desire, if you will, with expectation of fulfillment. In other words, your prayer ought to be rooted in expectation. Uh, um, your prayer ought to be rooted in the Lord will make a way somehow. This thing that you're praying for in your own lives, do you believe that God will do it? Uh, do you believe that God is going to bring it about? But the trick here is not only do we need to believe, when we get down and we pray, the difference between wishing and hoping has to do with when we wish for something, we just present to the genie a series of Y'all ever watched 
redemption show about the genie? Yeah. When the genie wants you to give a wish, he's got some instructions that you got to follow. Uh, he says, rub the lamp three times. And if you rub the lamp three times and say, I wish, I wish, I wish, uh, then you get the desire of your request. Well, my father's children, I got to tell you that, that prayer and real hope does not rest in a series of buzzwords given to God. We get on our knees and we say, Lord, I know you make a way, but do you believe that the Lord will make a way? Uh, we get on our knees and say, Father, I stretch my hand to thee, but they quickly grab our hands back and put it in our pockets. See, prayer is more than a series of buzzwords. Hope involves more than some slogans. Some things that you think God wants to hear. Thinking that if I say it this way, then surely God's going to bring my breakthrough. And you, you do it on Sunday, you might do it on Monday. But the next morning, the wish did not come through. That's because there's a difference between hope that rests in our faith and wishing. We who love the Lord, we do not wish. We hope. Bigger. And slogans. God to bring about a change. From several years ago to November 8th, we've been bombarded with slogans. Stronger together. Bombarded with slogans. A greater America. Before that, bombarded with slogans. Yes, we can. Hope, we can believe in. And I declare today that despite your political persuasion, I bet you'll find that things that just rest on slogans are not substantive. See, tell me, yes, we can when we have a nation where boys are not shot down in the middle of the street. Tell me, yes, we can when women can get equal pay for equal work. But you can't politicize those things. Those things have to be on justice. And we got to be careful for these slogans. Slogans that keep you being emotional. Uh, uh, slogans will have you wishing, but there must be substantive hope. So how is hope made act? Well, in this morning's text, Paul is talking to us in Romans about hope. Now, you got to understand where Paul is in Romans. See, when Paul first met the Lord and wrote his own his book, Thessalonians, Paul had the idea that Christ was coming back in a few days. Um, he had, if you will, that Christ was coming back in a year, so he, he was preaching, getting ready, because he's coming back again. But as we get to Romans, Paul is getting closer to his mortality. He's getting closer to the end. And so because he's getting closer to the end, he's, the, he's determined now in developing a new theology of hope. New theology that says, if it don't happen, then what do I do? Uh, if the breakthrough doesn't come through, then where and who am I? And so here in his soliloquy on justification here, Paul says to us and gives us some instructions on hope. Hope undergirds our prayers. Hope is a principle by which we stand on. But hope is defined by our approach to life. See, this is what Paul is telling us. Paul just doesn't say, go on out there and hope. Paul says, not only that we also boast in our sufferings. He gives us a process knowing that suffering produces endurance. And endurance produces Character and character produces hope. See, when we pray and we pray and we move it into a position of hope, we have to first address our character. Our character must resemble the thing that we're hoping for. We must understand that we we gain hope out of our sufferings. That even in our sufferings, God is trying to do something with us. Even in our heartache, God is yet speaking to us. Even in our pain, God is yet trying to deliver us. And so there is a process for those of us that are hopeful. It is our character. 
character that breeds about hope. And so what are you saying? What I'm saying to you today, my father's children, is this. That whatever you're hoping for, you have to try to become that while you're hoping for it. Um, whatever it is that you are asking God for, you got to become that while you're thinking about it. So if you want to be a success story, uh, then you need to start carrying yourself like a success. Uh, you got hope that you're going to be successful, and, and I would I would charge you to walk in success. I remember interviewing for a, a company many years ago. I was right out of college, and I was speaking with the, the head of human resources, and he said, what are your goals, Andrew? And I said, my goal is to one day be a successful member of my community. He stopped me right there, and he said, I have a problem with what you said, and that's the whole interview answer that you're supposed to give people, but I was glad that I sat with this brother and had this conversation. He said, your problem is you don't understand that to be in my office, you are already a success. You don't understand that, that, that everything that you've been through, from 85th and Drexel uh, to this corporate wall, everything you've been through, from, from grade school, now graduating from Morehouse, you're already accept, a success. So what I want you to understand is that if you are hoping for success, you need to understand that you're already a success. And the only thing you're asking God to is to bring you up a little bit higher. But for all that he brought you through, all that he's done for you, then you got to know you got to walk into success. You want to hold your head up high. You want to say, I'm not where I want to be, but thanks be to God. I could be dead sleeping in my grave. I'm not where I want to be, but I remember the time I almost lost my mind. And so because I hope for a better thing, I'm walking in that better thing right now. See, your hope rests in your character. I like to read stories and I like to watch stories about great men. And the other night I was flipping the channel and I watched the Steve Jobs story. I'm the founder of Apple and I watched, see we always watch the back end of people's life. I watched how he got kicked out of his own company. And how his company brought him back. But see, there's a certain, when you hope, you got a certain mentality. See, if you're gonna, you want to be a millionaire, your mind's got to be like a millionaire. You can't want to be a millionaire and still acting like you're on the south side somewhere. You got to be, if you want to be a millionaire, it's tight, but it's right. You got to put on a mind like you live in Highland Park. If you live in the projects, you still got to have a mind that you're on the north side. You got to have a mind. So I watched them, I watched the stories, I watched the stories of great men. What allows them to succeed is even when they're building computers in their garage, they have a certain mindset. They're hoping for success. They're hoping for success and they have already become the success. So when they get there, so that's the part of our prayer. When we are praying, we are praying with a hope because we are doing the work while we're praying. We cannot just get on our knees and wish. See, when we wish, I wish I was a millionaire. You know what that means? When you wish, that means I don't really want to have to do no work. I know none of y'all in here play the lottery. It's just, it's just an example. This is just an example. When you wish, you, you want to go and put your numbers in when it get real high. That, that's a wish. But to live a life and a mindset to work towards, not only all about being a millionaire, but just being financially responsible. That takes some work. That takes some work to say, when I'm hoping, I, I know it's this tight for me right now, but I got a hope that God's gonna, that God's given me this plan and I'm gonna work through this thing. See, that's what, that's what the fault of our prayers, we get on our knees and what we're really doing, we're saying we're praying, but we're wishing. Look at your neighbor and say, stop wishing. And we think we're fooling God. We think we're fooling God. We say all these things, but, but really, while we're praying, we have not changed our attitude. We think we're fooling God. We get on our knees and we say, Lord, I want to be a better person. Woo, y'all ever 
heard that one. Yeah. I heard some of the biggest devils in church say, I want to be a better person. Lord, work in me. Do a new thing in me. Everybody, I, hallelujah, all oh, be quiet. The reason why I say that is because that's wishing. If you want to be a better person, act like a better person. You think you're getting on your knees and pressing somebody, but then don't try to get up and be a little better than you were. Nobody's perfect. Everybody's going to slip and fall, but, but, but try to be that person that you want to be. If, if you want if you want to be, if you're a boyfriend, and you want to be a good husband one day, I can't start acting like a husband right now. Take care of her right now. Open the door for her right now. It'd be easier for her to say yes when you finally ask. But you can't. Some work. Let me talk to my parents for a moment. Most disgust I will say disgusting. The most disgusting thing that I see a parent do is I see some parents, not in here, but some parents let their children do whatever they want to do up to 18. He or she is laying on the couch, no good, ain't doing nothing, and either they're a friend or a parishioner, they'll call me and say, well, he 18 now, I don't know why he or she ain't got no job, why he or she not in school. See, you can't, you can't bring about maturity because she 18 now, maturity is going to be developed when she was nine. When she was 10, you're supposed to say, get up and brush your teeth. When she was 11, you're supposed to say, time to do your homework. When she was 12, you're supposed to say, this is how you present yourself in front of people. Talk to people. When she was 14, you say, when well, you got a job, you got to be on time. You got to dress a certain way. You got to stop them at the door when they're 17 and say, baby, you might have to go back and change that. You can't wait.
Stop wishing to start hoping. Become your prayer request. You might not have much right now, but I dare you to walk like you have much. You might not have great status right now, but I dare you to walk among kings and queens. But finally, there's more to hope than the treasures of this world. Finally, the ultimate hope, the ultimate hope in life does not rest on where I should matriculate in school. The ultimate hope in life does not rest on how I make it into management on my job. But real hope, real hope in the Lord and Savior gives you hope when you're up and hope when you're down. Real hope, as Dr. King told us when he talked about the real meaning of hope. He told our people, he said, when you have hope, be careful of watching your rooting your hope only in the end result. But sometimes your hope will just help you make it through. Anybody here know the joy of the Lord just helping him make it through? See what makes the other hope work is behind the scenes there's another kind of hope. Behind the scenes there's a hope that the world doesn't give and the world can't take away. Behind that hope is a hope that the writer of Hebrews talks about. He says we have this hope a sure and steadfast anchor of our souls. A hope that enters the inner shrine between the curtain where Jesus a forerunner on our behalf has entered and has become a high priest forever. There's a hope behind our firm hope and our hope as the Hebrew writer says now faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. So what I'll stop by here to tell you as I take the greatest difference between wishing and hoping is my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' love and righteousness. What does that mean? When I'm broke, I still got hope. When I'm
But this is what many of us do. We ain't thought about the Lord all week. Sunday we come to church. Can you fix it? Can you do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Oh, won't he do it? Tuesday you're looking for something to happen. That's because you're wishing you ain't hoping. See, hope got you praying on Monday. Got you praying on Tuesday. Got you praying all week. Got you walking up in here Sunday. Walking up here on Sunday saying, Lord, I know you're going to make a way. Lord, I know you're going to work that thing because I'm already walking in that thing right now. I, stop, stop praying about, Lord, stop me from being depressed. Stop being depressed. Some of us need medication, not all of us. want to have joy? Walk in joy. Put joy in your life. Put joy in your heart. Stop asking God to remove ignorant Negroes out of your life. Wish it. Hope. Say, I'm hoping for you to get out of my life and I'm locking the door today. That's my hope. That you get out of my life. I'm locking the door today. I'm blocking you on Facebook today. I'm blocking your call today. See, that, that's walking in a prayer that's hopeful. Not just wishing. Oh, I sure hope he don't call me. <laughs> what did you do? Walking in a hope. See, what I'm trying to get you to do today, take control of your life. Stop blaming that body for why your life is not straight. Black folks, stop blaming the white people. Yeah, there's some things against us, but I swear the more I watch TV every day, we are worse in it. We are our worst enemy. I know sometimes I sound like a Republican to y'all. But I was outraged. I saw that black young man take down that officer. Bang her head on the concrete. She in the hospital because she was scared to pull her gun. And he was full of PCP. If she had a shot to kill him, not people here, but irresponsible people on the outside would have been marching. I tell you right now, let me be out with one of y'all. And I got something to stop somebody. And I see somebody banging Miss Mary or Diana's head in the ground. They done. I'm just tight, but it's right. And I would hope y'all would do it for me. You do something. I'm gonna look over at you, Mike. You big. Help me. Don't you have something? <laughs> we got to take control of us. That's the bottom line. Whatever it may be, we got to take control of us. Stop wishing for God to do something. Are you willing today to believe that God's going to do something? Do you believe it so much that you're willing to become that thing already? To walk in that thing already that he's called you to believe, to be? Let's walk in what Dr. King taught us. And that real hope cannot, this is what frustrates us in life. From me to you, all of us somewhere in our heart want to be large and in charge. That's just the fact of the matter. But don't let that enslave you. Because real hope, when you know God has a plan for you, you just press your way. And then you know that that plan that God has for you might not be that plan that the world looks so good at. You know, I had someone come into my office. I knew they was lost when they started. Said, the Lord has called me to a greater world. What are you talking about? God don't talk in 
terms like that. There are no big eyes, little use with God. There are no great works, small works with God. Where does God have you? Have hope. You can make it. I know some of us are struggling today. But God will hear you. You have worked hard to make it through. He hears our faith cry. He answers by and by. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. We invite you to join our church today. See, that's what this time is. For you to put in action the hope of God for your life. He hopes that you are on good spiritual fertile ground. He's calling you today to be a member of Transformations Church. By letter of Christian experience, we say come on down. Come be a member of our holy family. Stop wishing. Today, you've learned the difference between wishing and hope. Let us stand to our feet. We offer Christ to you. We offer Christ to you. Oh, my brother. Don't 
Jesus' name, we ask these and 